Greetings, Earthlings. My name is Zero Jake, and welcome to Space Engineers at last. Again, we are landing on Earth, uh, on the atmospheric lander, and we are playing with realistic inventory, realistic welding, grinding, assemblers, refineries, all that nonsense, because I felt like I needed a challenge. So, you know how I usually play with mods? Well, I've stripped it down to about five, and most of these are uh, either cosmetic or their uh, quality of life. We'll add more mods later when I do a kind of uh, an episode using that mod, but uh, for now the mods that we have is uh, Ship Speed 500 uh, made by Midspace, we've got the Conveyor Air Vents, we've got the High Tech Camera, uh, we've got Space Just Got Real, uh, which you can see now by everything being incredibly dark and we've got eyes just got clear which is for lcds meaning that it's not growing uh glowing completely yellow when you have your cursor over it uh now as you can see we're just uh moving into land uh, on hilly terrain so uh i'll hand it over to present me in order to get this thing on the roll okay so we have landed on the planet um well nearly it's the middle of the night and we're running with uh, space just got real so it, it's very very hard to locate any solid ground um, so what we're going to do is we're probably going to want to get a light set up somewhere so that we can actually see the ground properly uh, I mean I could just uh, scooch over a couple of meters that might work in fact we should have a with a beacon up there but that's not going to give much light Interesting. Anyway, um, we're going to be purely relying on uh, uh, performance issues, you say. Interesting. No, no, we don't want that. Turn off auto locking, please. Thank you. Right, we're just going to go up a bit more. Goddamn trees. Uh, cheating. Technically, by using an external camera, but, uh, uh, well, that's what we're doing right now. And there we go. Excellent. Park. Good. Right. That's us. We are now parked on the planet, and our first thing, that, uh, our first mission that we have to do is we have to deploy a base of some kind. Um, re uh, why are you such a dirty kind of scarred black interesting well first things first as i said we need to deploy some kind of base uh so let's see what we have in stock uh that we can use to make things we've got some steel plate computers we've got ammunition power cells construction components we've got oxygen ice and uh some additional things all seems good uh, we are playing on one times inventory size, so the amount of uh, in, uh, amount of equipment that I'll be able to carry is not that much. We're not going to be using a hand drill. Uh, right, so let's grab some steel plate and let's start placing blocks. Uh, as the sun starts coming up, you can tell because all the scenery is getting a bit weirdly lighted. Um, okay, so I think if we have our base on top of here, that should give us... Uh, enough room to expand. However, having it here might not be a good idea because it's not flat. But then again, it's never bothered me in the first place, so... Hey ho. Uh, first of all, I'm going to change out the uh, taskbar to be the thing that I prefer it to be. First of all, you have the armor block. Um, and then you have the slope. Um, light corner. And then inverted light corner. And then we also want slab, though that's usually uh, that's built into light armor blocks, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, then we want to go into uh, character tools, and we want to grab welder and grinder and put them on six and seven. That's what I usually do. Um, we do have hydrogen with us, uh, but a very limited amount since using up. Also, we don't have a hydrogen bottle yet. We're going to need to get some of that. Can't use jetpack for now, which is basically what I'm trying to say. Okay, good. Let's start constructing a base, shall we? I want the orientation to be something like this. Cool. 
so what we're going to do is we're just going to make a simple uh, five by five platform. Uh, I'll tell you uh, which we can use to place down uh, some of our machines. So refinery, assembler, that kind of uh, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, so place them down, and now we build very very slowly. All right, so we have our lovely 5x5 five five platform and the sun is up, which means that all good things will happen. So, first of all, we need to start moving our inventory from the ship over to the base. Um, I mean, we could use the ship to go scout for a better base location, but I'm not tearing that up. Uh, so, first things first. We need to place down a cargo container on the ground so that we can move things uh, back and forth. Now, one option that we could do is since it's going to be a pain to move things around we don't have the infrastructure yet but one thing that we need to get up and running as soon as possible is a welding ship that we can use to weld things because look at our pitiful inventory space so uh, we are going to need a couple of things uh, we want to build a large cargo container for a large ship but I don't think we have the materials and also it would be a waste of materials at this point so we're going to go for a small cargo container instead apparently this is a temporary ship which is why we're moving things but I thought I disabled that in the settings never mind uh, we've got a conveyor we've got the nuclear reactor with 0.3 uranium in it that's not particularly useful we need to find another source of ura uh, uranium and fast um, in fact, I should probably turn this thing off uh, because we don't need anything that's in here right now. Uh, that battery stores how much? Currently storing 3 megawatt hours. No, currently storing 2.79 megawatt hours. So that should be fine. It's on semi automatic, so if we need power, it should discharge. But we don't want to get rid of these batteries yet. They're gonna, uh, they're gonna power everything else. So let's take first of all, let's take out the uranium ingot. Then let's turn everything else back on. And now the batteries are paying for it. Good, good. Uh, let's throw uranium into here. Now, we where is the other cargo container? So if we have a look in here, we can see the num uh, our cargo containers somewhere. If I remember what the name's, small cargo container, okay. We can see small cargo containers. We're going to put them on HUD so that we can locate them, except for the fact that we don't have a radar. That's just a beacon. Okay then, not going to be that easy, are you? Uh, okay, so we've got two cargo containers, one's here, one's there. Pretty simple. Um, I also don't think that we need anything connected if we're moving things out, so first things first to go is this conveyor tube. That conveyor tube took out uh, took up half my inventory, so we're going to need to do a lot of shuttling back and forth. So let's throw things in here, um, and we want to have a look. What do we need? We need 40 interior plate. We need a display from one of the other cargo containers. Uh, you can hold. Can you hold the rest of the inventory? Uh, we've got we've got displays here. Got those. And we've got a lot of solar cells, which we need to use to set up a solar panel. Right. Now, you may be wondering, my god, this is taking a while. So... We've got a plan, or rather, I've got a plan, and it's going to go horribly wrong, as per usual. So, under, uh, on top of this block here, that I'm currently underneath, is the cargo container that we want to get stuff out of. Over there, we've got a cargo container and a reactor. A reactor which currently isn't powered, but we can use power on it very easily. Now, what we're going to do is twofold. First, we're going to construct a collector on top of this cargo container 
so that it can uh, receive everything that we want it to receive. So first of all, we're going to need a display. Uh, we're going to need a couple of displays. We're going to need some steel. Let's just place that on top so I don't have to jetpack constantly. Throw a connector on that. I mean, collector. Very confusing. Uh, right, so we're going to need one more display, uh, a couple of other things. So let's get ourselves some of this, some of this, some of this, throw it on there. We're going to need uh, six more construction component, some motors. Uh, right, so we want eight motors, six more construction component, uh, ten computers. And we need one more display, which we can grab from the other ship. Let's do that quickly. Now, where could we grab displays? Well, we do have these LCD screens, which have displays on them. So we're going to be grabbing those. Since these displays, uh, whilst they're useful, uh, not useful in my current circumstance. Um, yeah, so we're just going to grab these. This should give us all the displays that we will need for quite a while. Drop down here, weld this thing up. And there we go, we have ourselves a collector. Now this collector collects things. So if we have a look here, it can hold about uh, 6.2 th uh, thousand litres of stuff, of volume. Whereas this can hold 15.6 thousand. So it's kind of like a half third the size of a regular uh, cargo container. Um, but what it will do is it will automatically output to a cargo container that's um, in on the same network, right? Uh, now, technically, these are on the same network since we connected it to a port on the cargo container. However, we need to power everything first. Now, if we get this reactor online, the reactor shouldn't be uh, using that much power, so 2 kilowatts, which is hardly anything, and we should find that this doesn't drop that quickly because it's maintaining the, uh, the conveyor network, right? So, we've now got a, a collector on there, and our next step is to build a... Uh, connector on there and we can set the connector to drop uh, contents inside it uh, and throw it down to the collector meaning that we only have to when we're uh, destroying this uh, or gutting it we can just move things into the cargo container and they'll be automatically dropped and it'll automatically drop the solar cells and the power cells and all that without our needing to carry it all the way uh, let's get some more hydrogen in us Good. Uh, so what we're going to need to do, break this, and then we're going to break the floor very slowly. And then we're just going to hop over here, get down again, and break this block here. Good. Uh, and then we can just throw everything here. Right. Now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get ourselves a connector, which is this. And we're going to want to place that about here. Right, so we're going to need 150 steel plate, which we do have. Uh, we're not going to be able to carry all of it, but we can certainly place it down and start welding to get the hitbox aligned. Uh, we then want some computers, some motors, which I think most of it is over at the other one, isn't it? Though we should be able to get nearly enough of this stuff to get it running. Small steel tube, 12, and small steel plate. Yeah, we're going to need to grab some small steel tubes from the other area. I need your small steel tubes, sir. Thank you. Right. Let's fly up here. If we could weld it, maybe, without the cargo container going in the way. Very fidgety putting this thing together. 
But once I've put it together, we're going to lift off in the ship and then try and align the uh, collector to the uh, connector. You know, they should really have different names because I am confusing them all the time. Anyway, uh, once this thing is complete, we can demonstrate what I can do. Right, so if we go in here, we find ourselves connector. You can see that it has uh, some functions on it. We can have a strength of its connection, so uh, how much force it uses to connect itself to another connector if we want to connect two of them together, which we're not doing. Um, lock and unlock, and throw out and collect all. Uh, now I'm going to demonstrate throw out uh, in a second, and collect all will basically do this. If we go to the uh, connector, we have a look at inventory, we see connector is empty. We then say collect all, and then everything will be moved into the connector, right? Very useful. Uh, it means that we can transfer all of the inventory from uh, the entire conveyor network over to this single piece. It won't uh, throw everything that's not connected. So, uh, for example, I broke this connection earlier for a reason, because uh, I didn't want all of the ice and bottles going into the connector just yet, because we still want our medical facility running. So the next step is to get in and uh, lift off. Now we don't have long uh, since we are running on batteries currently uh, but we should be able to start moving. So we're going to start moving downhill. We want to pitch up just a bit. There we go. And we want to move this into alignment with the connector. Okay, right, going to need to go back a bit. And uh, we'll just go down so that we can get as close as possible. If the third person camera would actually like to do uh, the job that I designed it to do, I didn't design the third person camera. That's uh, someone else entirely. Right, so we should be above. Okay, should be above. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and get the uh, connector. We're going to disable uh, collect all because this is a trial run. Uh, let's throw everything back into the cargo container where it should be. Uh, yeah, throw you back, throw you back. And we're just going to drop, for example, three small steel. Uh, no, uh, three interior plate. What we're going to do is we're going to set up this so that we have the connector onto the cockpit. And we're going to say this one is throw out and this one is collect all. I'm going to keep collect all off. So if we say throw out, uh, once I position the camera correctly, uh, let's turn this off, we can see it'll drop the item and it will go in. Good. And if, for example, we go collect all, it should start dropping everything into the collector, meaning that we can transfer all the cargo. Now, for, uh, just for a second, I'm going to stop it from throwing things out because we need to deal with an, a new problem that's come up. We don't have enough space on the ground. So we're going to tear apart one of these, uh, probably the upper cargo container, and then we're going to place that cargo container down on the ground, and then we should have enough in, uh, inventory space. Uh, I want to get up here with the with the gyroscope, please. You're not letting me. Okay. Right, so uh, we're going to move this small cargo container over. We should be able to put it within inventory, he says. We can't. Uh, so we're going to move down here. We're going to go throw down the cargo container. Go weld it up. Go go back up again. Uh, back up again get the other bit. Um, you still had things in, you cheeky person. Uh, well, we'll deal with that in a second. Right, there we go. Back up again, uh, we're going to sit on top of this and start moving things down. 
just so that this doesn't despawn. Because power cells are very painful to get since you can't salvage them off of batteries. Which is painful, but uh, has to be done. Or at least I don't think you can uh, do charged ones off of batteries. I'll have to do some testing. Right, there we go. Power cells in there. And then we should just be able to jettison everything down below. Uh, refuel and hydrogen. Since we don't have a hydrogen bottle, um, I'm not going to be using uh, jetpack all that often, he says, after having used it for about 10 million years. Collect all, throw out, and we should be able to jettison everything in. Right, that should be everything, right? Uh, yep, cargo is empty. Excellent. Right, so that's all the cargo done. Uh, we can hang here for about an hour, and now we have the fun process of let's tear the thing apart. Uh, move everything that's non-critical for this ship to remain afloat over. Now, first of all, oxygen tank. We can tear that apart because we've got infinite oxygen here. We're on a, we're on a uh, Earth-type planet. We've got an oxygen generator, which we will need to move the ice from, which means we'll probably want to add conveyors back to move it down, though we can probably do it by hand. He says, we have no way to access it right now. Uh, we've got a refinery which doesn't contain anything, so that's easy. Get take, get rid of this light armor slope for a second, so I can move around. Battery, battery. We're going to keep the batteries in for now. We're going to be placing batteries down on the surface later. Uh, I should be able to retrieve the ice from here, right? Yeah, not much of it. Uh, it's going to take about 10 trips to move all the ice. Sounds fun. Uh, programming block is currently running. Nothing. Right. I don't know why it's even there. Um, we'll take that apart as well. Because we can use programming blocks. And in fact, we're going to use it in the next episode. Anyway, uh, throw that in here. Should all get thrown out. Duke. We probably want to move a bit just a tad forward. Because uh, we're hitting the side of it. Right, that should be better. Uh, we still have an hour. We need to get rid of that timer block. Um, we can get rid of that conveyor, we can get rid of the oxygen tank. Yeah. Throw it into the cargo container. You can tell it's working because of the sound effects. Uh, anyway, I'll be back in a second uh, once we've uh, gotten rid of everything, I suppose. Okay, so we've unpacked all of the essentials that we need. We've got the refinery over there, we've got the assembler, we've got oxygen generator, we've got uh, medical room, and we've got cargo containers where I think we're also at maximum capacity for them as well. Uh, 15,000, 13,000. We're pretty much at capacity, so uh, destroying the rest of this isn't going to give us anything, or rather, we're not going to be able to store all of it, which is, you know, not that useful, but uh, we can create some more um, cargo containers if we need to. Anyway, we've now got this empty ship, right? I've currently got it off. Uh, don't go dark. Uh, I've currently got it turned off, which is why the batteries are red, um, but we can use this to move around. Now it's got um, at least 16 minutes of power remaining. So if I turn it on um, and fire up the main engines, 15, power, uh, 15 minutes of power remaining, minimum. Um, it's also got an ore detector, uh, which I believe is turned on. Yes, uh, it's got a range of 150 meters, so it's not that long, but uh, it should help us find any ores there in the area, um, which we are going to need to find quite a lot of. 
Now, the plan is, um, what we do with this ship is we tear it down and we build a smaller ship out of it. A ship that can actually maneuver and is built for flying around in the atmosphere rather than just landing. Uh, we're going to turn this off though. Uh, it's going to be made out, out of a small grid, so we can use... Oh my... Yes, because this is made of like at least a thousand motors. Two thousand motors if you count the other engines. So we can build several small ships with the motors here. Uh, but the thing that we're going to do now is we're currently running on uranium. Now, that's all fine, but we have uh, 0 0.27 left. Which is not that much, and if we want to start using the assembler or refinery more often, then that's going to hamper our reactor so badly and we're going to run out of power. Running out of power is very bad, if you could guess, because that means we can't do anything until we get power back online. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a solar panel, uh, a solar farm to give us some energy. So we're going to create an offshoot. We're not going to weld this up. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, I'll weld it up later, but for now, we're going to build a solar panel area. Uh, if I do this... Now this should give us enough room for some solar panels to be placed. And the way that we're going to do it is we're going to have... Um, we're going to make a, a small tower up here and then we're going to put, uh, and then we're going to place a rotor. So we're going to grab a rotor, and then we're going to place it like so. Okay, right. So the fun thing, fun fact about rotors and pistons is that this is the rotor head, right? It's actually a separate grid, but it's a subgrid, so it uses the same power supply. And I'm about to run out of uh, hydrogen, so let's go get that back up. Right, and we can use this rotor to turn the solar panels uh, as the sun moves, which is pretty good. Uh, we're going to use a script for that, which means we're going to need to place down the uh, the block, the programmable block that we took apart earlier. Uh, but we're just going to create a, a simple system here. Uh, then, we'll, then what we want to do is we want to grab slaw, no, solar, solar panels. And we want to place uh, a couple of solar panels. If I can find a proper place to put it, we're probably going to need to make this tower a bit taller. This is really to demonstrate uh, how this works rather than actually making it work properly. We'll probably uh, place our solar panels over there where they're uh, going to be much better suited. Right. In fact, there might be a better way to do this. No, there is a better way to do this, uh, and that is in the form of making it a uh, stump. In So, right, there are two ways that we could do the solar panels. We could either have them uh, on edge and we uh, tilt them around this way, or we have them uh, like... Give me a second. We place that there. We place this here. What we do is we place the solar panels like this. Except, you know, a bit further down, if I could. Place the solar panel like that, it will fall over because that hasn't been welded. Good job there, Jake. Good job. Get rid of that for a second. Right, so we're going to need to weld up both the uh, rotors. Uh, oh my god, that's 24 steel. Mm. Right, so we're going to weld these up um, so that we can get it working, and we'll be back in a second. All right, so uh, I've done a bit of changing of what we're going to do. We're instead going to have uh, our little solar tower be like this. Okay, fine, get rid of the hydrogen then. So, first things first, we're going to need a rotor. No, we've already got a rotor. We're going to need a programming block. Yes, programming block, not rotor. So we're going to want a programming block because we're going to want to automate this thing and in order to automate it, we need to use C-sharp. I think it's C-sharp anyway. Um, we're going to need to use coding. But it's okay uh, that there is a piece of code on the uh, Steam Workshop which you can use, which means you don't have to code anything. You don't need to know anything about coding except from you probably should want to. Anyway, so 
the code that we're going to use, yes, is if uh, we browse workshop, stop rotor on high solar power output. Uh, remember an exit. Good, right? This is what we want. Good, we've got the code ready. Now, this uh, program relies on the usage of two rotors. Uh, an X rotor, which is this one, which is on the X axis, and so therefore uh, goes around like this. And then a Y rotor, which goes, um, if I had hydrogen, that would be brilliant. Which goes like this. I'm going to need a couple more steel tubes and steel plate. Right, so we have our y-axis rotor, our x-axis rotor, and then finally we're going to need at least one solar panel. We are going to have two uh, on this one, but for now we'll have one. Place that there. Weld. And there we go, we have ourselves a solar panel. And as you can see by the green light, uh, it is gaining power. More power than our reactor needs to output in any case. So we've got our programming block and we've got our solar panel. Now we need to rename a couple of things. We need to rename this solar panel as solar main. Uh, the rotor two, which is technically on the uh, one of the subgrids as rotor Y and the rotor that's on the main grid as rotor X. Okay. Those should be renamed. Um, and then what we do is we run with the argument of start. Uh, recompile, run. There we go. And so this thing should move around in a kind of calibrating way. Um, I don't know how long it should take in order to be completely stabilized, but as you can see, it will uh, try and keep the highest solar panel output as possible. Uh, now, if we have a look in here, uh, no, here, right? You'll see a number next to the solar panel. This represents the current um, value of output that it will start changing rotations, right? So when it gets uh, below a certain amount of output, it will change the rotation so it can gain more output. It's a highly sophisticated piece of software, but um, it should be very useful after it calibrates. Now, of course, we only need one of these. And so what we can do is we can uh, we can add another one onto the array. And then what we can do is we can add another rotor on here and add another one onto the array, which is brilliant. And then we can, I don't know, build it higher, build more. We can build multiple of these tiles as well and scale this up so that we can get as much solar power as we need, right? We've got the solar, pow uh, solar power done with, and now the only thing that's left to do is to make batteries. Um, you should be fine. You should switch any moment now. Any moment now. If you want to work properly. Mate, okay, fine. Uh, right, you're not. Yeah, you're currently at 40. Yeah, now at 50. Right, 60. Yeah, it takes a while to calibrate. Um, we should maybe see that done. There we go, it's at full power. And now it's not. Yeah. Well, uh, only time will tell. Good, right. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to create some batteries. Uh, because without batteries, what's the point of having solar panels? Because we'll only be able to use that power during the day and, you know, the day's like less than an hour long because of the inclination of the uh, inclination of the planet that we're currently on. And also that the day is two hours, I think. Or maybe it's one hour. I can't remember. Uh, right, so we need power cells. We've got power cells. I think we have enough for two batteries. We'll stick with one for now. So we're going to need about, what, 80 steel plates? Because the power cells are rubbish in terms of how much you need in terms of inventory space to carry them. 
Uh, we need that. We need 30 of you. Uh, 25 of computers. I said 25. Thank you. Uh, and then we just power cells. Do, do, do. Uh, we're going to start building batteries uh, probably here. Though I'll try to make sure that I get everything welded up so that it doesn't look like rubbish. Um, in fact, if we get you we place you here and you here we can get rid of this and then we can place the battery here okay so we can have the battery in the stem so to speak or at least the bottom two sections of the stem weld uh, remove that didn't break anything good weld and now we just need masses and masses of power cells Right, there we go. All the components are in the battery, and now we just need to weld it up. Uh, what I've done is I've removed the uranium from the reactor so it doesn't all just pour into the battery. Need to find a way to stop the reactor from doing that, probably with some coding. Like, for example, um, if batteries equal zero, or something like that, then set the reactor to turn on. Create a backup reactor system. Okay. And so now, we should be gaining power. Uh, we want semi-auto, please. Right. Uh, I don't want you to do anything like that. You've already got one megawatt hour's worth of energy. What? Uh, recharge, please. How do you already have one megawatt hour of energy? I just placed you. Anyway, current input is uh, 12 megawatts from something. Um, of course you did. Of course you did. You're draining the reactor. Nah. Turn this stupid thing off. We nearly ran out of uranium there. That would have been um, troubling. Anyway, you're now getting power at 34 kilowatts. Um, wow, two days. That's certainly going to take a while. Anyway, uh, one battery should st uh, sustain us for a while. And of course, we can place more solar panels to you know, increase our power output. But that should keep us stable, quote unquote. Uh, in the meantime, we can, of course, produce more once we've got a bigger facility but next thing on our agenda will be to spread out the uh, spread out our construction and start building some uh, tools for mining but until then my name has been zero jake and transmission mm -hmm.